I don't know what's remember, coming. Yeah. Just I don't know what's read coming the next. Remember? Just every, read the Every prompt. time I come out in the studio at a time when I normally wouldn't, Nicole's like, why, I know, is, why are you here? Why is Beth back? <laughs> You're not supposed to be here for another 18 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so my coworkers had told me there was a different script that was supposed to appear right here. Again, I'm being told to just read the prompter. <laughs> But they're surprising me now, so I really have no idea what's about to happen. Nice. Cold reads. What a pro. <laughs> well, that is why I am here. And if you haven't heard, today is Nicole's last day on TV9 in our newsroom. She's staying with the company, but she won't be mm -hmm. here. She's not going far, right? Yeah. We'll probably hear her pounding about two floors above us, <laughs> right in our building. In those great shoes. Uh -huh. And she'll help recruit journalists and meteorologists. Yes. You're on my list for our newsroom, You're but before she goes, we wanted to share with you her favorite story from her 14 oh. years here at TV9. Yeah, since 1999, we have followed the story of Jalen Hauser, and that's when Jalen began his journey with blindness. Now, in 2012, Nicole, mm -hmm. you shared that story through us here at TV9 and how he has not held back, that blindness has not held him back in any way. In the band room at Solon High School, Jalen Hauser listens, a D -D -D -C. then plays an instrument he's never seen. It's just what a trumpet is. I can't really explain what I think it is in my mind. When Jalen was 18 months old, doctors diagnosed his parents' worst fear. She says, well, I think he has uh, tumors in his eyes. Jalen had bilateral retinoblastoma, one of the worst cases at UIHC in decades. His parents made the difficult choice to remove the tumors and his eyes. We can deal with the blindness. You know, I'm sure that he can deal with that if he's cancer free and doesn't have to fight that the rest of his life. Um, that's a win, we think. Surgery stole his sight, but couldn't steal his spirit. Now at 14, Jalen's a freshman at Solon. He's an A student. His fingers read faster than most eyes in the room. And once he got to high school, it was time to start a new page in his story. His lifelong dream was to be on the drum line in March with the Solon drum line. Because that was the loudest thing on the field. And when I'd go to football games, and I always liked that. But after a while, I thought the trumpet had him better sound. And I said, you know, that we have a, a, a blind student coming up and wants to march, and I think that this is a perfect opportunity for us to, you know, as a, a whole band to reach out and make this happen. So began a step-by-step -step process to get Jalen in tune with the band. It's 16 counts to somewhere else, maybe, and if I get off, or I go too far to the left or too far to the right, someone can grab my shoulder and kind of direct me back to where I'm supposed to be and then I'll be back on and everything will go smoothly. Whoever's closest to him takes control and takes him to his next spot and leads him by putting their hand on his shoulder. And he also learns how like to listen around him so then he just knows how many steps he needs to go to. I know that we form like lines that make shapes but usually I don't for sure know what shape we're forming. I feel like sometimes we all can take it for granted just marching, but we have to remember that he's doing this without sight at all. People see how hard he works and, you know, there's no excuses. I mean, if he can do it, they can do it. And so I think that makes and motivates people to work hard themselves. Hard work to the beat of 108 hearts. He's fearless. He has to be to get out there on the field and, and put himself out there like that. And uh, he's just doing an awesome job. To watch the way that they worked with him out on the field. I cried my eyes out up in the stands because it's so amazing, not only what he's doing, but the way that they're helping him. And nobody asked to help him. They do it because they want to. I'll just put enough effort into it and eventually I'll accomplish something. Nothing is impossible if you want it enough. 
I love that story. So I brought this for you, but now I just need one. So, that is such beautiful storytelling. Awesome. Oh, thank you. It, it, I mean, I, I was a trumpet player in band, and I think I just, I can't imagine having to do all of that and not having sight mm -hmm. and not being afraid to try something. And he inspired me. So I just love that story. And but his band members as well, though, to help them out. Absolutely. That was just really mm -hmm. inspiring as well, to see that and how they'll help him get in the right spot. And boy, to try that, that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of a surprise for you. Someone wanted to say hello to Nicole on her last day on air. Hey, Nicole, this is Jalen Hauser. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, I'd heard that it was your last day and I wanted to wish you the best in whatever comes next. It was a great experience being able to work with you and spread that message of hope to other people. So I thank you for that and I wish you all the best. He's so grown up. <laughs> he is, but it's been 12, 11 years. He, his, his dad, Tom, sent me a very nice note because I'd posted that story in my social media uh, this week and um, just said that he was accomplished. He was on the dean's list. He got two degrees from Cornell and that nothing ever stopped him. And so, yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. um, it's just the power of, of what we do sometimes that mm -hmm. kind of just really brings you in and realizes mm -hmm. you can tell some incredible stories and have an impact on someone's life. And they My are very, own. very grateful uh. for your telling of that story. And we have another surprise coming up, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <gasps> hey, Nicole, I wore our special shirt for this occasion, but I'm going to miss you in our newsroom. You know, I was never a big fan of the 4 o'clock Q&As, but I was always grateful to do them with you just because you had this calming presence in the studio. I've always admired your professionalism in this business, and I'm going to miss you walking by my desk when I got to check out your shoes of the day. You have a big closet, but I don't know how you walk in here. Also, just for you, I promise to be better at my creamer club duties, so you don't call me out here. 